Okay, good morning. I think it's still morning. This is uh, Wednesday, and I've had a horrible time uh, trying to record this video. I got uh, interrupted a couple times, and I made a couple mistakes, and uh, the dog walked in and left a little present behind just in the air, not on the floor. And uh, so that, so we've had some had some struggles. Um, but that's okay because I can edit all that out and you'll never know the difference, right? Except I just told you. But anyway, um, it's sometimes you have days like this and it's and it's happened today. So uh, I want to get back to uh, yesterday's assignment before we go on forward with today's. And so some of you that struggle with that, I think we can fix a few problems. But I think it's important for you to um, get your calculator out today. Um, you'll, you're going to want it. It's going to save you a lot of time. If you want to do this work longhand, you're more than welcome to. I did on a couple or, or on the, at least one of the first videos, but um, boy, it really slowed us down. Um, so w hopefully this won't take forever. So um, you can get your cal calculator. I wish I had one like that's on the screen or you can get your um, your trusty little mobile device and do that as well. Um, that's what I'll have handy here. Uh, for a couple different reasons, and then um, maybe you might have one of those old uh, fashion styles. I think I have one that's really cool that I should show you and talk to you about how it works sometime. But this is actually an old fashioned ad o meter calculator, and uh, we'll, we'll have to talk about it a little bit. Guess what the red part's for? What do you think that's for? Yeah, I bet you're right. It's subtraction. Okay. Um, Anyway, so let's get started on yesterday's. Um, if you need to, pause the video, go get your calculator, and um, we'll be good for a little bit. All right, so this is yesterday's. I've covered up most of the answers, but we could probably um, show you those, and you'd be fine. There's a little bit of work to show on these, but most of it's in the setup. And so uh, let's go back to the first one that we did yesterday, which was number one. Todd drove six laps in 16 minutes. What record did that equal? Well, when we did that problem, we had to take the six minutes or the six laps and um, set that as a fraction, or at least that's how I'm showing you how to do it, over 16 minutes. So um, the thing about ratios is that they're always comparing one thing to another, laps to minutes, and as long as you keep that comparison and in the right order, then these problems are a lot easier to solve. Six laps, 16 minutes, and it says, what record did that equal? Well, we're just going to keep laps per minute, and that's handy because all of these on the chart above there have laps per minute. Laps comes first. Laps comes first. All you had to do in this problem was reduce it. We got three eighths, and uh, it was three laps in eight minutes. Laps is still on top. Eight minutes is still on bottom. So that matches up with this one here. Okay. When we went down a little lower, um, we, I think we did nine, and um, no, we didn't do nine. Uh, I can't remember which one we did yesterday. I've done a couple of these. Um, some of these were um, a little bit more complicated because you had to compare them with these up here. So you're comparing a comparison, and uh, that adds another element to it. Um, we're going to look at nine in just a second, but I want to look at number three real quick. On number three, um, it says Carolyn drove two laps in five and a half minutes, so you got two laps and you have five and a half minutes. That's an uncomfortable thing to have a mixed number in the denominator of a fraction, but um, you can clean that up pretty easy. And actually, if you do that, five and a half doesn't fit. You can actually double it, five and a half. Five plus five is 10, half plus a half is one. That makes 11 minutes. And you double the two and that makes four laps. And you've actually solved your problem there because it says Carolyn drove two laps in five and a half minutes. Which record did she tie? Well, four laps in 11 minutes goes exactly with the fourth place uh, record there. So <clears throat> that problem is solved. And then on number four, you basically do this problem in reverse um, for number four, and that helps you solve, solve that problem. Um, down to number nine. Number nine is setting up um, how many minutes would Sharon have to drive 15 laps. Laps is on top, remember. 
to tie for fifth place. So you, you don't know how many minutes, and that's your variable. We'll talk about that with this next paper in just a second in depth more. And then you want to tie for fifth place. So fifth place, fifth place is five laps and 14 minutes, okay? And how many minutes would Sharon have to drive 15 laps to tie for fifth place? So if you're going to multiply or divide by three here, then you've divided by three here, right? You see how I compared 15 laps, five laps, 14 minutes. So the thing is, we don't know what to divide by. But if you go the other way, it was 5 to 15. This time it's 14 to another number by doing the exact same thing backwards. 14 times 3. Okay, and then you should get 42 laps for your answer there. Okay, if you've really gotten desperate and uh, you've had some struggles, sometimes it helps to start with the answer first and work your way back. Um, there's your answers. Pause the page, use that to your benefit if you need to, no cheating, and let's go on to the next one. So um, if I was handing this out in class, it'd be hilarious. Instead, I'll just have to tell you how funny it is. When I hand this out, it would be epic proportions, and we would talk about that and make, make cool voices. And you guys would get annoying, and I'd have to stop you and say, slow down, stop talking. All those fun things that we do in class every day. Um, but we like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, epic proportions. Proportions and ratios are very similar. They, um, are comparing, uh, two things to each other, such as players and innings in number one, but, um, also then they're comparing them with another comparison. And so, um, again, we'll talk a little more in depth as we do the problems. Let's set the scene for the paper here and, um, Read the directions. Jennifer is a sports writer for the school newspaper. She has a great record for predicting how well a player will do in, a coming, in an upcoming game. Her secret is to set up proportions based on previous games. You can do the same. Proportions, statistics. Statistics uses proportions a lot. Um, those are big things in the sports world. Uh, you Every game, everything that's, that you ever hear about, people are trying to predict um, the outcome, um, not just for gambling. We do it in high school too. We like to talk about records. Um, that team has a five, four record. That means they've won more games than they lost. Um, if you talk about our team had one loss this season, you're comparing that loss to the wins, one loss, 16 wins. Usually it's reported though with wins first. So if you have a 16, one record, it's 16 wins, one loss, and that's pretty much understood. Um, if someone uh, asks you how many games you've won, um, sometimes you, you just tell them the record instead, and the first number is always the games you won. Um, in ping pong, we've been playing ping pong at our house quite a bit le recently. You announce the score before you serve, and so if you have nine points and your opponent has six, you would say nine serving six or nine six, and then you'd serve that's um, an understood proportion. You're comparing your points to their points. And um, that stands to keep it, keep it equal. In this problem, or in this uh, situation, Jennifer's writing with these um, sports problems, and so she's talking about Maury. Maury walked six players in three innings. How many players is he likely to walk in five innings? And so... Um, you start with problem one on this paper. Six players compared to three innings. Let's see if I can get you both in view there. Six players versus three innings. So I set it up like a fraction again. It's just a comparison. I'm using that line as the divider. It equals so many players, which we don't know how many. How many is kind of our um, international code for a variable or a question mark whenever you see how many. You're going to put some kind of variable in there. I like to use the first letter of, of the, the unit, so P for players. Um, and then you get to make the funny joke about how we're looking for P. <laughs> that's, a, 
that's yeah, don't do that one on the video. Um, okay, and then um, then you don't know your innings. Uh, actually, that you do. It says how many players is likely to walk in five innings. So you have five innings here. So the difference between um, today's assignment and yesterday's assignment is that this isn't really easy transition here. Three doesn't multiply by something evenly to get to five. That's a harder problem to do. You'd have to involve decimals or, or fractions, and this would be trickier. So I'm going to show you the solution to this. Um, there's actually two ways. I'll show you the, the uh, quick reducing way first, and then I'm not going to talk about that one anymore. So if you want to do the first way, you can, but I'm going to do the rest of the examples using a um, the proportion uh, cross multiplying, and we'll talk about that in just a second. All right, so what I mean by reducing, you've got six players and three innings. You notice these numbers probably are easily reduced. Six goes, or three goes into six, and so this would be a two up here and a one here, okay? So I'm going to write that over here. It would be two to one, all right? So if you have five innings, now it's a lot easier because I legally reduce this down. It's a lot easier to transition between one and five. You can just times by five, right? This is five times as many innings as this. If there's two players per inning, then in five innings, I'm going to multiply by five, two times five, then in five inning, innings, it's going to be 10, 10 players. Okay, so our variable there is 10. All right, another way to do that is if, and this is probably the way that you will rely on most in your math career from now on, is if you don't know your variable up here, and you've got these numbers set up like this, you can do a thing called cross-multiplying. Now, it's not cross-canceling, it's cross-multiplying. So you're going to go 6 times 5, and you're going to have 30. And then you're going to have 3 times P. I can hear you all expecting another joke there. Not going to do it. I don't want you guys all running around thinking we're going to throw P out everywhere. All right, so then we're going to divide... Then we're going to divide out the three. This is solving equations. So we're going to isolate the variable. The operation is times three, so I'm going to divide by three on both sides. Three divided by three cancels that out, and you've got your P over here. I'm not going to do it. And you've got 30 divided by three, which is 10. Okay? Switch this around. Your P, which, by the way, was players is 10. So the answer to the question about Mari walked six players in three innings, how many players is he likely to walk in five innings means 10. He's going to walk 10 players. If you're the coach and you know the statistic, Mari's probably not the one that's going to be in very long, right? Okay, that's not a good statistic. All right, got into my workspace for number four, but we'll see how this works out. Uh, on number four, we're talking about basketball this time. And it says the basketball team scored 49 points in the first 21 minutes. How many points are they likely to score in 27 minutes? Okay, again, got to set this up. So we've got 49 points versus 21 minutes. Okay, and they wanted to know how many points. She's going to figure, try to figure this out. How many points in 27 minutes? Okay, again, these don't really match up, okay? So you can do um, your little calculator method here. Actually, you could do your reducing method here, but um, that involves a couple more steps, and, and we're not going to focus on that today. So we're going to use our calculator. We're going to do our cross-multiplying here. We gotta have to pick a variable. It's points. We could use P again. You can use any variable you want. We're going to use N because... The P jokes just, you know, that's not appropriate for sixth grade children. Yeah, it is because it's hilarious. Okay, so then we're going to cross multiply. We have 21 in, and we have 49 times 27. It really doesn't matter which side you put it in. Um, on this one, the variable was uh, ended up on the wrong side, and that may have been uncomfortable for some of you that are still new to equations. That's okay. You can always put it on this side. The most important thing is that you're cross-multiplying and setting them equal to each other. So 49 times 27, I'm doing that real quick. 
on my calculator, it's 1,323. Um, I don't know if you can see I did, uh, well, that's not important. I did uh, all of that by hand earlier and uh, took up a lot of space and a lot of time. So the calculator's purpose is to save you time, and that's good. Uh, you have to know how to solve the equation. The variable's in. You're multiplying. Do the inverse of that. Divide out your 21. Divide by 21. And n is going to equal, um, you do 1323 divided by 21. And it's exactly what we were expecting. Weren't you expecting that? 63 points. So another six minutes, and you get more points added to that 49. It's going to end up being at 63. So you would expect for number four, the team to score 63 points. This is your answer, 63 points in 27 minutes. Okay. We'll work a little bit more um, on that with tomorrow's assignment with, with unit rates. All right. I'm going to flip the paper, and we're going to go down to number nine, because number nine gets tough. Um, and then I'm going to talk about an alternative way to solve these problems. Number nine, Carrie is a long-distance runner. She completes one mile in eight minutes. What is her rate in feet per minute? Okay, so they're mixing some things up on us here. Um, we've got organizational issue here because the hover cam needs to be able to see both. Okay, Carrie is a long distance runner. This is number nine. And she can run one mile in eight minutes. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, what is her rate in feet per minute? Now, the problem is. It wants to know, it doesn't want to know miles. That would be miles per minute, or per, yeah, per minute. They want to know feet per minute. And so you've got actually a couple steps to do here. And one of those is to realize that one mile is equal to how many feet? Anyone know that off the top of their head? If you Google it, you'll come up with... 5,280 feet. So you know that number, but you just turned it into a different number. And um, those are equivalent. It's just you've changed the units. And so you, you can do this. You can do this easily. So what I've actually need to do is change the problem just a little bit. It's now 5,280 feet over eight minutes. Okay. Because if she can run it in one mile in eight minutes, then she can run 5,280 feet in eight minutes. It's the exact same thing, right? Okay, so now we have to figure out how she's going to run that. Uh, what is her rate in feet per minute? Well, you, you kind of have to pick out per minute. Per minute means for every minute, which means we're going to have one minute as our denominator here. We're going to have one minute on the bottom. So... Our variable here with our feet, we don't know what f is. And so you have to transition between 8 to 1. 8 goes to 1. How would we do that? Yeah, you're actually going to divide by 8. So you need to do that to your top number 2. You're going to divide by 8. So 5,280 feet is 0 0.125 of a mile. Or we'll go 5,280 divided by 8, which is... 660 feet. Per mile. Okay. Let me back up just a minute and I'll show you that we could have done that cross multiply. 5,280 would have been over here. 5,280 times 1, which means it stays the same. And then you're going to go 8 times the variable, which is 8F. Then you're going to divide out your 8. We divide because it's being multiplied. That cancels out. Here's your F, and here's your answer here, 660. So your answer to this problem is she would run 660 feet per minute. Okay, that's a toughie. Um, hopefully everybody's watching these videos so they can get that one right. Um, I anticipate there's going to be a little bit of trouble with some of these. Um, there is a better, or there is another thing that you can do. 
if this page just proves too difficult for you and you've solved uh, several, a couple of the problems, you've attempted several of the problems and you just don't think that you can solve them, then here's what you can do. You don't have to worry about any of the arithmetic. The most important thing that you're learning right here is the skill that we're working on or the state standard or the common core standard, whatever we're talking about, is setting up the proportion. So for number one, your answer could simply be six players, three innings, equals P over five. Okay, that's just setting up that proportion that we did earlier. So you've got six players, three innings, and we're matching it up with, well, we didn't know how many players, right? But we didn't know five innings. Now, if you want to get rid of all the letters there, you've got six over three equals P over five, and you can cross cancel using a much simpler method. Uh, switch down to number eight. If you aren't solving the problems and you have these proportions, I'm giving you full credit, okay? So the people that aren't watching this, kind of missing out. Uh, for number eight, you've got the track team. Track team star runs 315 yards, 315 yards, and it's being compared to four and a half minutes. What is her speed in yards per one minute? So you're changing it to yards per one minute, okay? You have a number here that you'll eventually get to. If you simply write this, you've got full credit for this problem, okay? If you go a little further, I might throw some extra credit if you can solve all these problems. I promise I'll grade it anyway, one way or another. We'll see how you do. All right, any questions, please email me. Um, you probably, uh, this is preaching to the choir here, but one of the first questions I ask people when the email is, did you watch the video? Okay, so those of you that made it this far, you watched the video, good job. And if you didn't see the tie, it's a Looney Tunes stamp tie. I've got probably a dozen Looney Tunes stamp ties. One of my favorite characters, Marvin the Martian, is on there. He's not featured all that much, but uh, that's kind of fun. All right, thanks for watching.